Early Life Alexander III was born on the sixth day of the ancient Greek month of Hecatumbion, which probably corresponds to the 20th of July 356 BC, although the exact date is uncertain. He was the son of the erstwhile king of Macedon, Philip II, and his fourth wife Olympias. According to Plutarch, Olympias dreamed that her womb was struck by a thunderbolt that caused a flame to spread far and wide before dying away. On the day Alexander was born, Philip was preparing a siege on the city of Potidaea. In his early years, Alexander was raised by a nurse, Lenike, sister of Alexander's future general Clytus the Black. Plutarch stated that Philip, overjoyed at this display of courage and ambition, kissed his son tearfully, declaring, My boy, you must find a kingdom big enough for your ambitions. Alexander was raised in the manner of noble Macedonian youths, learning to read, play the lyre, ride, fight, and hunt. In return for teaching Alexander, Philip agreed to rebuild Aristotle's hometown of Stagera, which had been destroyed by Artaxerxes III. This gave the Macedonian court a good knowledge of Persian issues, and may even have influenced some of the innovations in the management of the Macedonian state. Heir of Philip II. While Philip was away, the city of Amphisa began to work lands that were sacred to Apollo near Delphi, a sacrilege that allowed Philip to further intervene in Greek affairs. The Illyrians invaded Macedonia, only to be repelled by Alexander. In 338 BC, Philip and his army marched south through Thermopylae, taking it after stubborn resistance from its Theban garrison. They went on to occupy Elatia, only a few days' marches from both Athens and Thebes. During the ensuing Battle of Chaeronea, Philip commanded the right wing and Alexander the left, accompanied by a group of generals. After defeating the Persians in 338 BC, Philip II of Macedon and his son Alexander marched unopposed into the Peloponnese. When they reached Sparta, they were refused but did not resort to war. At Corinth, Philip established a Hellenic alliance, which included most Greek city-states except Sparta. Alexander fled Macedon with his mother, dropping her off with her brother, King Alexander I of Epirus, King of Macedon. Alexander began his reign by eliminating potential rivals to the throne. He had his cousin, the former Amentas IV, executed, and had two Macedonian princes from the region of Lincestus killed. He spared Aridius, who was mentally disabled, possibly as a result of poisoning by Olympias. News of Philip's death roused many states into revolt, and Alexander responded quickly, mustering 3,000 Macedonian cavalries and riding south to quell them. In 335 BC, Alexander defeated the Getae and defeated the Thracian army near the Liginus River, a tributary of the Danube, and forced their army to retreat after the first cavalry skirmish. He also defeated Illyria's King Clytus and King Glaucias of the Talenti forcing them to flee with their troops. Athens sued for peace and Alexander pardoned the rebels, he left Antipater as regent to continue his campaign in Asia. Conquest of the Achaemenid Persian Empire. He crossed the Hellespont in 334 BC with approximately 48,100 soldiers, 6,100 cavalry and a fleet of 120 ships with crews numbering 38,000. After an initial victory against Persian forces at the Battle of the Granicus, Alexander accepted the surrender of the provincial capital and treasury of Sardis. He then proceeded along the Ionian coast, granting autonomy and democracy to cities. At Gordium, Alexander undid the hitherto unsolvable Gordian knot, a feat said to await the future king of Asia, and hacked it apart with his sword. In 332 BC, he was forced to attack Tyre, which he captured after a long and difficult siege. The men of military age were massacred and the women and children sold into slavery. Most of the towns on the route to Egypt quickly capitulated, but Alexander was met with resistance at Gaza. After three unsuccessful assaults, he fell, but not before Alexander received a serious shoulder wound. Alexander conquered Egypt in 332 BC and was crowned in the Temple of Ptah at Memphis. He restored the temples neglected by the Persians and dedicated new monuments to the Egyptian gods. The Greeks interpreted this message, 
one that the gods addressed to all pharaohs, as a prophecy. Alexander founded Alexandria, which would become the prosperous capital of the Ptolemaic kingdom after his death. Alexander allowed his troops to loot Persepolis for several days after storming the pass of the Persian gates. Plutarch and Diodorus allege that Alexander's companion, the Hatira Thais, instigated and started the fire that burned down the palace of Xerxes I. Even as he watched the city burn, Alexander began to regret his decision to loot the city. He talked to a fallen statue of Xerxes as if it were a living person. Alexander. I may have acted in many ways as the last of the Achaemenid dynasty after Darius I was deposed and killed by Bessus, his satrap and kinsman. He founded a series of new cities, all called Alexandria, including modern Kandahar in Afghanistan, and Alexandria Eskit, the furthest, in modern Tajikistan. Alexander personally defeated the Scythians at the Battle of Jaxartes and launched a campaign against Spitamenes, who raised Sogdiana in revolt. During the Achaemenid dynasty, most of the elite positions in many segments of the empire were reserved for Iranians and to a major degree Persian noblemen. During this time, Alexander adopted some elements of Persian dress and customs at his court, notably the custom of proskinesis, or prostration on the ground, that Persians showed to their social superiors. This was one aspect of Alexander's strategy aimed at securing the aid and support of the Iranian upper classes. The Greeks however regarded it as the province of deities and believed he meant to deify himself by requiring it. This cost him the sympathies of many of his countrymen, and he eventually abandoned it. Alexander personally killed the man who had saved his life at Granicus, Clytus the Black, during a violent drunken altercation at Maracanda. A plot against his life was revealed, and one of his officers, Philotas, was executed for failing to alert Alexander. In general, Greece enjoyed a period of peace and prosperity during Alexander's campaign in Asia. However, Alexander's constant demands for troops and the migration of Macedonians throughout his empire depleted Macedon's strength. Alexander minted gold staters, silver tetradrams and drachmas, and bronze. The gold series had the head of Athena on the obverse and a winged Nike, victory, on the reverse. Alexander did not attempt to impose uniform imperial coinage throughout his new conquests. Persian coins continued to circulate in all the satrapies of the empire. Indian Campaign After the death of Spitamenes and his marriage to Roxana, Alexander turned to the Indian subcontinent to cement relations with his new satrapies. He invited the chieftains of the former satrapy of Gandhara to come to him and submit to his authority. Amphis, Indian name Ambi, the ruler of Taxila, whose kingdom extended from the Indus to the Hydaspes, Jalam, complied, but some hill clans refused to submit. Ambi hastened to relieve Alexander of his apprehension and met him with valuable presents, placing himself and all his forces at his disposal. Alexander was emboldened to divide his forces, and Ambi assisted Hephaestion and Perdiccas in constructing a bridge over the river Indus where it bends at Hun. Alexander personally led a campaign against the Aspasioi of Kuna Valleys, the Gureans of the Gureus Valley, and the Asakanoi of the Swat and Bunner Valleys. In 326 BC, he crossed the Indus and fought and won an epic battle against King Porus, who ruled between the Hydaspes and the Assesines, Janab, in what is now Punjab. Alexander's army mutinied at the Hyphasis River, Bees, near the Nanda Empire of Magadha, and further east, the Gangaridae Empire of Bengal region of the Indian subcontinent. Fearing the prospect of facing other large armies and exhausted by years of campaigning, Alexander's army refused to march farther east. This river thus marks the easternmost extent of Alexander's conquests. Last years in Persia. Alexander adopted Persian customs and dress and introduced Persian officers and soldiers into Macedonian units. His troops mutinied when he asked them to forgive him for sending over aged and disabled veterans back to Macedon. The Macedonians quickly begged forgiveness and held a great banquet with several thousand of his men. Guards desecrated the tomb of Cyrus the Great in Pasargade, and Alexander swiftly executed them. Hephaestion, Alexander's closest friend and possible lover, 
died shortly after Alexander's visit to Ecbatana. Death and Succession Alexander died 323 BC, in the palace of Nebuchadnezzar II, in Babylon, at age 32. Diodorus, Plutarch, Arian, and Justin all mentioned the theory that Alexander was poisoned. The accounts were fairly consistent in designating Antipater, recently removed as Macedonian viceroy, as the head of an alleged plot. There was even a suggestion that Aristotle may have participated. The strongest argument against the poison theory is that long-acting poisons were probably not available at the time. In a 2003 BBC documentary, it was suggested that the Veratrum album, White Hellebore, may have been used to poison Alexander. Alexander the Great's sarcophagus was seized by Ptolemy II Philadelphus and taken to Memphis, where it remained until at least late antiquity. Caligula is said to have taken Alexander's breastplate from the tomb for his own use. The Alexander sarcophagus, discovered near Sidon and now in the Istanbul Archaeology Museum, is so named not because it was thought to have contained Alexander's remains, but because its bas-reliefs depict him fighting the Persians. Alexander's death was so sudden that when reports of his death reached Greece, they were not immediately believed. Alexander had no obvious or legitimate heir, his son Alexander IV by Roxanne being born after Alexander's death. According to Diodorus, Alexander's companions asked him on his deathbed to whom he bequeathed his kingdom. His laconic reply was, toi kratistoi, to the strongest. Alexander's last plans called for military expansion into the southern and western Mediterranean, monumental constructions, and the intermixing of eastern and western populations. The enormous scale of these plans has led many scholars to doubt their historicity. Other scholars have proposed that they were invented by later authors within the tradition of the Alexander Romance.